Hey YouTube, my name is Steph and today I'm going to share with you a new art form. I'd never done this before. I've never done a dia diorama before. Uh, recently some friends of mine got into Star Wars Legion, uh, which I thought was really cool, but I just thought I'd take this opportunity <laughs> and not that I want to really get into Star Wars Legion, but I, I've always wanted to make a terrain for it. And so I honestly, I'd never done this before and so I thought it'd be a cool opportunity to share my process from start to finish and you know I kept recording and recording my voice as I went to kind of show you real time what was going on through my head as I was designing this so it's you know I tried to speed up through the process as it took days and days and days to do this but I want to prove the fact that you could take a project like this and there's so many great so much great information online uh, so many great YouTube videos to show you how to do this so it's taking gathering all the information that I want to gather and try and make it as cheap as possible you know using scrap foam where you can using tree bark as stones you know using sawdust for your own uh, grass and you know there's so many great ways that are really inexpensive and if you really want to dive into it you take one little step at a time and it's quite amazing what you could achieve and I was super pleased super pleased with this diorama and so I learned a lot I would change some stuff probably um, but I want to share this process with you and I hope that you learn something as well so let's just dive right into it so let's get started here I have a inch and a half piece of foam here and underneath it I have a a piece of MDF it's it's about an eight inch thick and it comes in sheets of two by four feet at Home Depot and then I've just glued on a little piece of scrap there to help strengthen everything all together and what I do with the foam is I make sure that it's slightly smaller than the two by four feet and you'll see where see where that comes into play a little bit later on but right now I'm just templating everything out just trying to work it out see where I want uh, to place everything you see a river there you'll see some high ground and uh, you'll see some bark which will come a little bit later as well so all I'm doing is I'm redrawing it onto the second layer because the first layer at the bottom is only is only going to be the water layer the second layer is going to be the uh, the most the majority of the scene here the majority of the diorama so then again, I'm just retracing everything that's on the second layer and I'm starting on to the third layer here. And again, I'm just kind of planning it all out, but I haven't had my foam cutter at this point. So I'm just kind of piecing everything in, just blocking it all in. That's, that's all you need to do at this point is just bulk it out. So at this point, my, my uh, foam cutter came in and I'll show you in a different video how I use these cheap $5 foam cutters to my advantage here uh, versus investing in a, in a whole setup. I want to try these out and see if I can make it work. Of course, this is like the first time that I actually use it. So I'm just playing with the temperatures. If you go too hot, it cuts too quick. If you go too slow, it just drags like this. So in a different video, I'll show you how I uh, take a universal charger or adapter and uh, how I make it work but here I'm just cutting the foam you see there's a little bit of a ledge at the bottom there I'm gonna be reinforcing this with about a quarter inch piece of MDF so you see it's recessed there and the, that'll go for some blocking a little bit later so here I just started forming my rock faces so this is cedar bark and cedar bark is awesome for making it look like a bit of a shale design or shale rock. And it's got all these beautiful little layers in there. When you put it together, it just, it just looks so good when it comes to rocks. And there, you don't have to worry so much about making them fit perfectly. So here I'm just cutting, cutting with foam cutter, just kind of notching out what I want to do because I just want the foam to extend as far forward as it can be before it hits the rocks and so this will be a bit of like a like the ocean and there's a little waterfall that goes into the ocean so to scale it's probably only like a, a four or five foot drop but 
uh, so you see I took the long piece of foam cutter and I was able to bend it and that was kind of the key if I just took a regular foam cutter it wouldn't work as well because it would uh, it wouldn't it, I wouldn't be able to bend it like a curve like this and really be able to get into the river like this hence why I bought these ones but here I'm just going out and chiseling out the river. It's the scene is not too terribly high. It just for transporting purposes, I want it to be fairly manageable. So here I'm block gluing on my uh, piece of bark, aka rock faces here, and I'm just making sure that all this glue is settled in. I also chop off the edges of these pieces of uh, wood. So they fit within the, 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 the diorama. So these are the quarter inch pieces of MDF. And I just trace them out, cut them out. And uh, you'll see I'll be attaching them to the side. And See, I wasn't too concerned about making it a perfect quarter inch, you know, gap on the edge. You see I use PL to fill in some of those gaps. If there's too much of a gap, and if it's tight, then I just PL it and go right right up against there. But I noticed that, uh, oh yeah, you see the sawdust on my back? That's not just dandruff there, but you see how I pulled it away here and I put some hot glue. All that hot glue does is it, it allows it to set very fast because PL takes about 24 hours to 48 hours to to, to set and if I, if I wouldn't do that then it would uh, slowly detach over time so I just put hot glue and kind of squeeze it into some of the cracks there to make sure that it uh, dries very fast dries very fast and it's gonna hold it for the remainder of the dry time You can see what I'm working with here. So instead of that tower, I'm actually just gonna make a bit of a mountain. This is what we use instead of sculpted clay. It's like a cheaper version. All that is is insulation. It's like a paper mache uh, insulation that you would use uh, from Home Depot there. And I mix it with a whole bunch of uh, plaster or plaster of Paris, I believe it's called. Just kind of mix it all in and then add some water. Now, the amount of water that you would add varies. If you're trying to do something extremely flat and, and, and but it'll take longer to dry, is you wet it a little bit more. But if you want it chunky and really build it up, then um, you, uh, you kind of do it to taste. So here I'm just trying it out for the very first time. So uh, I don't really know what I'm looking for here. And I made it a little too chunky. So the thinner you make it, the more you're able to spread that out into a thin layer. But in this case, I made a little chunky and then you just kind of learn from your mistakes and make a new batch. But I'm working in very small batches, you know, about the size of that bowl, just because if it's too dry, it does tend to harden really, really, really fast. So instead of using a sculpted clay, which is super expensive, I'm, I'm, I'm finding cheaper ways to put this together. You know, bark is free, foam is very cheap. I just use scrap foam. MDF is not, is not very expensive. These bags are very cheap. You know, I'm just finding new ways, new alternatives. You don't have to buy the expensive stuff. You can you can make do with, with what you got. So that giant bag is gonna last me a long time. But I did use end up to using two or a box and a half of of, of uh, Paris uh, plaster here I'm just kind of blending it in with the rocks make sure you leave it a little bit clumpy on the rocks if you do it too smooth then it doesn't really look like rocks so you can sell the effect more if you make it a little bit more clumpy on the rocks here I'm just kind of blending it all in rubbing it you know rubbing it down to make sure it's it's uh it's all nice and fairly smooth again you don't have to be perfect just it's just as an undertone underlayer so here i'm going to take some mod podge matte 
mixed with about uh, two parts water, one part watch podge, mod podge. And here I'm just soaking the bark to seal it before I paint it. Just making sure it's nice and sealed and then get rid of all the drips. Just gonna seal it all in. Of course I don't paint this fast, just making it a little bit quicker so we can get through this as quickly as possible. All right, so I went outside and painted it a deep gray charcoal. That's where I wanted my rocks to start with. I also added a thin coat on the outside where the MDF is, but it didn't really soak very well. And I was impatient. I really wanted to get going. So uh, I, I, <laughs> I took a hair dryer and started drying the MDF. But essentially, I just want the recesses, the deepest parts to be this dark, dark charcoal gray. I take some more Mod Podge here. Mix it in with some water. And this is about 50-50 or uh, maybe a little bit more Mod Podge than water here. And I just made it so that uh, it's nice and spreadable. Makes a nice kind of fairly thin, well, it's a medium coat, I guess. Just do little sections at a time. And I just sifted some sand. Sand that you would use for taking care of salt, yeah, I mean, of, of snow outside, you know, so I, I kept some of the big stuff when I sifted it. I kept all the big stuff for the river, but here I'm just covering pretty much the entire thing out of sand, and if not, if there's not a spot to, f to, to, to fill with flocking later or, gra or whatever, yeah, at least it'll have some, a sand undercoat, so it adds some weight, but just kind of touching everything up, making sure it's all nice and flat. Once you cover everything, then you can uh, move on. So, all right, now I'm gonna add some of the gravel for the river. This is a little bit thicker. Um, you know, it's actually part of the sand that I didn't go through the sifter, so I'm just making it quite gravelly in the river. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint, um, paint my water, water section. Now this you have to be careful because later on when I get to the resin part, I had a little bit of a chemical reaction and so you have to be careful, you have to do some testing with your resin to make sure that it's not gonna react to your, this is just acrylic paint, but for some reason the black and not the blue, not the green, but the black really reacted to it. So gotta kinda, I wish I would have just spray painted it, to be honest with you. So here, uh, at this point, we uh, we add some dry brush, dry brush allied gray. And so I'm gonna try and get some variation here, but it's just very dry. So it's, it's using a technique of putting paint on your brush and then wiping it away on a paper towel and then just giving out super light brush. You can always add more, it's a weathering technique, but you can't remove from it. So here I'm adding a little bit of a yellow I went from dark, deep charcoal to light gray to a kind of a mustard yellow to add some aging, almost like water stains. And then after that, I'm gonna just touch everything up with a little bit of white. Okay, at this point, I'm adding tile grout. And so you can find this at Home Depot, whatever, they come in these big bags, so it'll last you a long time. But I got this kind of like white, uh, white type uh, sand grout for the paths. And then I, I did a darker brown, and then I did an even darker brown for some sections. And I wasn't really satisfied with these colors, so I actually went into, uh, you know, <laughs> and, and got some actual dirt. And I sifted some actual dirt in here as as an undertone for the grass and the and the and the, and the green grass and the yellow grass. So here I'll I'll show in a different video how I made this, but essentially what it is is it's just sawdust with some pigment. So it's just paint, sawdust, a uh, little bit of uh, sunlight, um, dish soap to help break that up and not too much water, but a little bit of water as well. And you can basically dye, um, you can dye some uh, sawdust into any color you want. But I can show you that on a later video or give you a link. As 
once I go through the green here, as soon as you're done all the grasses that you want, all I did was I didn't do it on here, but you just take um, basically Mod Podge and a lot of water and you put in a, a fine mister spray bottle and just spray the entire thing. But make sure you wipe off the excess off the rocks and it'll kind of make everything, uh, you know, make ne everything nice and hard. And I didn't even show you this little bush that I made. Now you can just it could be endless on the vegetation you can add afterwards so i'm going to keep it pretty basic in a different video I'll show you how to make the bushes but for now what i'm doing is i'm damming up getting ready for the resin and so i added this piece of wood with some tuck tape to make sure it doesn't stick to it that's a great way to anti-stick it <laughs> and then we're just gonna seal up the edges uh, I ended up getting a bit of a leak of resin, so I didn't quite do my job properly here, but I just add this Liquitex um, gloss basically on here and make sure I dam it up with uh, with um, this Liquitex anyways to hold the resin in place and it prevents any leaking from happening. So I put it at the top of the river, at the bottom of the river. I basically want to <laughs> prevent it from water falling over the edge. So I do it on every edge I could possibly think of where the resin could possibly seep through. Even the lake, uh, wherever I put the tuck tape there, I just make sure I put this Liquitex and make sure that it'll dry. So I let it dry overnight before I attempted to put some resin in the morning. But So here I am in the morning and it's going to be very hard to see um, the resin on the black here just because it's so black but it's actually a couple different layers i have black and i have some blue near the edge you just can't see it because of the video camera but you'll see it at a later date when i show you the fine details but uh here i'm 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 basically putting some vallejo air paints and just tinting it one drop at a time until my desired uh color basically and you kind of want it a bit of a murky color because it, it is quite transparent but uh, you'll see once I get to the river how transparent it actually is. But you kind of want this kind of murky color. So I added a lot of blue and a little bit of brown in here. Just maybe four drops of, three drops of blue and two drops of brown kind of thing. And then you see I blow on it and I'll tell you why in just an instant. But um, in the meantime, when, you get, when we get to the river part, you'll see how I... I made sure that it was a little bit murky and it was more brown than blue here because I wanted to see more and, and a little bit of green actually I added as well just to add more of that murky type look and then what will happen over the next 15 minutes is the bubbles will all try to escape through the top and you'll have a ton of bubbles at the top of your resin and that just happens every time but after about 15 minutes of waiting for the the bubbles to rise to the top you'll see me just breathe on it just a light breath on it and with your breath just a type sound and a, you'll, you'll see that the the bubbles will just absolutely disappear and it becomes like glass so later on we're gonna add some we'll, we'll be able to hide you know some of the bubbles later on because we're gonna add some waves and stuff like that but watch how i add my breath on there and the bubbles just disappear so once this is drying and while this is drying and it'll take about 24 to 36 hours for this stuff to dry while that's happening you'll see I'll, I'll do the waterfall so on a piece of paper I kind of drew out the size of the waterfall and I add a piece of glass on top of it and then I take these water effects by uh, uh, I believe it's woodland scenics and I add these these basically rows of waterfall and I want a little bit of variation here so let's speed it up here and you'll see how I spread it out with my fingers and that's all I'm doing is I'm just spreading it out and I want it to be about the width of of the entire waterfall but I want multiple layers I want variety I have I've never worked with this stuff before so I, I want to do a couple different versions of it I just kind of dab it with my finger to make it look like falling water and uh, you'll see we'll change it up but I just move the paper over and make a couple layers of other other things to just just to add some variety I don't know if I want to do some thick stuff thin stuff um, but ultimately uh, it's 
was about two inches high so I went a little bit bigger than two inches and uh, made made a bunch of uh, a waterfall now I'm just dry brushing with a little bit of white um, just make sure it's super fine and you're just catching the high points you can see that there's already white is still white in there I got impatient I know it's it's completely dry it's just the core of it is not dry but it still stretches and it's still dry so when I apply this onto the waterfall I you know I'm still able to work with it now this stuff sticks to resin like crazy so it's not a matter of trying to put glue down or anything like that it wants to stick to the top end of the resin and the bottom end of the resin so I started with a base layer that just kind of follows the rocks and then I'm adding layers upon layers I'm adding probably like six layers of water on top of it to add depth so um, you'll see how some of it is even a little bit more curved so it's got some gaining momentum around the rocks and I'm just working my way around it to, to add that dynamic and it just, it'll just look like this flowing just this flowing river so then as soon as you see me put uh, some water effects at the top just to blend it all in and I make sure that's a little bit wavy same thing with the bottom now this is gonna dry clear it's not gonna stay white so here I'm just kind of blending it in as best I can it's not a super heavy waterfall but it's enough to make a good amount of rushing uh, rushing water so the resin is still soft so I don't want to do the rest of the water at this point all I want to do is connect the bottom the top and start start blending in that process once your resin is dry, um, we're going to go ahead and add some Mod Podge gloss for the top of the wave. So uh, you'll see me kind of trying things out and trying it different ways. But essentially what we're doing is we create like these slight wave effects by adding these kind of this these clumps of Mod Podge gloss. And then all I do is I blow it forward towards the direction of the water flow and you create these little micro pockets of waves and it, it really <laughs> really does an amazing job at creating real effects and so you have to work in very small amounts because if you're as thin as all could be almost to the point where it's clear it will not um, it'll dry almost instantly so you want to make sure that you got good globs that'll move forward as you spray them and same thing with the kind of ocean or lake portion of it I'm just going a little bit more heavy just because I want a little bit more height and just shape so what I tried to do here is I want to create waves like a heavy wave and so what I did was I with this portion here is that I just kind of bulked it up almost like a big fence line of Mod Podge gloss and and I just blew it all for it as if it was one giant wave and it worked really really well so here's the tricky part where the waterfall is going to meet this oncoming wave going in different directions so there's going to be a lot of swirling action happening so uh, I'm just kind of playing around with directions you want the wave will be hitting the rocks the the, the waterfall is going to be pushing against the waves so there's a lot of swirling you just kind of play with the, the motion now is this all going to dry absolutely clear so you're not creating these really white waves here you see the glob that I'll be putting across there and I'll just push it forward to crest over um, a little bit more added resin there and it'll crest over I mean it looks really awesome if it could stay white more or less white but it's not it's gonna dry clear and you'll see that in just a few moments some of the it took two days and the resin didn't even uh, or sorry the Mod Podge didn't even fully clear up so it looks really good but as it dries I take a picture of it to see where all these major lines are gonna be and you see now it, it's dry and it's all clear so I have to re-add some white into it so I didn't want to go crazy on the on the white like you saw previously um, I just want to start feathering out some of the major waves some of just a couple waves that are hitting the rocks obviously the splash from the waterfall and the white rapids on top of that and some white rapids up the river but I started playing around with this and it, this took me a very long time 
just because I wasn't super satisfied. So the blending action with these brushes that I have, I just wasn't satisfied. I, I, I kept adding a little bit more white and feathering it out and feathering it out and feathering it out to create these kind of just subtle waves to not, I didn't want it to be so white that it would detract from the rest of the diorama. So here we're just gonna slowly add more white and slowly add more to the waves that I wanna add to. But I wasn't really pleased with the results, just with the feathering of the, the brush. So I, I decided to add a fine layer of Mod Podge gloss and blow it forward over the white just to add a little bit of depth to it. But that's about it for this section. Just kind of feathering it out, blending it in. A lot of dry brushing, a lot of dry brush. Just dry brush over all the waves and try and hit those high points to make it as realistic as possible. So that pretty much covers it for this diorama. I want to share two tips with you that I probably didn't get into depth with uh, before, or maybe three tips, well, we'll see. Um, just some things that I thought of. Uh, I did mention to spray, uh, to make sure that you spray some one part Mod Podge and two parts water on your entire diorama. I did it again, I actually did it a couple times and just let that dry and it becomes rock hard when it comes to kind of making everything stick in it and so that everything doesn't kind of fall apart as soon as you start moving it. So that's a big one. Make sure you spray it on. If you do get it on the rocks or if you do get it on the resin, no big deal. Just go ahead and wipe that off while it's still wet. And uh, another tip too is that I did mention is when you're putting a thick layer of the Mod Podge before you put the gravel down, just give it a little spray of isopropyl alcohol. And what it does is it allows the glue to kind of settle in around the rocks. It's a great tool to do that. And the final tip that I would give to you is when I'm dry brushing all the rocks, um, I was painting the bottom of the ocean or the lake or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I, I would go from a gradient from black to like a bluish teal and it's very subtle but I had a little bit of wet blue teal and I kind of accidentally swiped on it and it made my dry brush with a tiny hint of blue and I actually used that to my advantage to sweep underneath some of the rocks as if there was almost like a reflection and I added some blue to the bottom of those rocks. So that's just kind of a, maybe more of an advanced tip to not, to, to make your pieces blend into each other, that there would actually be a, a bit of a reflection off of that blue teal water up onto the rocks. And I just added a bit of a, almost like, um, almost like a, a weathering technique onto those rocks. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this build with me uh, and I, it was exciting to be able to share it with you. I tried to condense it as much as possible, but uh, we'll see you guys on the next build on our forum and we'll see you next time. Bye.